everybody, what's up? It's your girl Candy, and we have been tackling for the last couple of weeks all the conversations about body surgeries. Now, last week I talked to my girl Esther, and we just we talked about mental health. We talked about how things that's going on with your body affects mental health. We talked about a few different weight loss surgeries lap band and gastric sleeve amongst other things it was a very touching heartfelt speak on it this week we are going to be speaking with my girl so jody who when i tell you she's a surgery connoisseur <laughs> and the reason why i say that is because she has done multiple surgeries including the gastric sleeve as well as you know all kind of stuff but we'll let her talk about it but she is so open and so honest and i hope you truly enjoy this speak on it because it comes from somebody who has been there and done that okay and now she's even opening her own recovery house in the dominican republic so much love to so jody and thank you oh and i have another thing i forgot to tell you so jody is i would say mentoring esther in a sense of basically telling her some of the things that she had to go through when she went through her weight loss surgery. It's a lot, guys. I hope it helps somebody, and I really hope you enjoy watching this video. Hey, everybody. This is your girl, Candy, and I have my friend and hairstylist, So Jody, to the left of me, and we are about to speak on it. Okay, Jody. so we're doing like a whole um, body series type of situation. It's not really necessary. What I've found now is that it's not just body, it's mental, it's physical, it's all these different things, but it's a lot dealing with um, surgery and the different questions that people have about, you know, different procedures, um, things. So I've had a couple people come on to talk to me so far. And I definitely wanted to talk to you because you are an advocate <laughs> for surgery. Yes, I am. Okay, so much so that you even bought and um, getting ready to open up your own recovery house in... Um, Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know where to begin with you. <laughs> <laughs> Should we start there since I said that? Okay, so let's start with, if you don't mind me asking, mm -hmm. um, your journey has been a long journey because you dealt with a couple of the things that some of the people that I've already talked with before, but um, weight was a major issue for you mm -hmm. um, when you first started on your journey. So do you mind telling everybody what was the biggest that you've ever been? 350 pounds. Okay. And how tall are you? 5'4". Five, four, 350 pounds. You made a few decisions, a few different things that we would like to talk about. You did the, what was it? The So I started off with the paniculectomy. Which is what? Please tell them what that is. So a paniculectomy is, so have you ever seen um, bigger, am I talking to you or the camera? You can talk to me. Okay. Or the camera. So a paniculectomy is you, you see people where their stomach hangs over their private parts. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's not a tummy tuck. They don't tighten up your abdominal wall. They literally just cut off the part that's hanging over and sew it back together again. So you did that procedure first. Yeah. And then you did the, what was it? The gastric sleeve. The gastric sleeve. Mm -hmm. And then you also had... And then after the gastric sleeve, I did a tummy tuck um, and lipo. Um, and then after that, I did my breast. What did you do to your breast? Because you don't have I, implants, do you? I don't have implants. I have a lift. Okay, you did a lift. Yeah. Okay. But they need to be lifted again. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. <laughs> she is an advocate. Like, well, she I want, will tell okay, you to get Let me in a tell you what I want to do next. I want to do my arms. I want to get all this cut off. Then I want to reduce my breasts. Okay. and lift them. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do an uh, implant per se. I might end up doing it, but I don't want to because my auntie had breast cancer and I want, if I ever get it, for them to be able to find it. And I want to do a back, a upper back lift. It's called a back bra lift. Got so it. they lift the skin up and cut it. Because when you're so big and you lose so much weight, you just have skin everywhere. And so you have to keep getting it cut. So it's not even that I'm addicted. I'm not trying to be a dancer or anything like that, but I just, you have skin everywhere. Right. Okay. So how much did you lose? Uh, and my from the gastric sleeve, I got down to about one ninety. 
190. So mm -hmm. how many pounds was that? You went for three. Like 160. And how long did it take you to lose that after doing Within the deficit? Within a year. Within a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we've been friends for quite some time. So I was friends with you prior to all of those surgeries. Yeah, you was. The thing that I, I mean, I think all of it is interesting. First and foremost, I was having a conversation with Esther. Our conversation got very emotional. Did it? Yes. I wish I was here for that. I really wish you were here for that uh. because some of the things that, you know, she's dealing with physically you dealt with, but mentally she says that she feels like um, most of her issues that she needs to fix are mental before she starts working on the physical. So what do you think about that? Because I know, um, you know, some people are very much against surgery and they feel like, okay, that is just, you know, really not gonna help somebody if you don't necessarily fix whatever it is that's making them eat or whatever. I don't agree with it because I feel like I was just telling one of my clients the other day. You can sit, people, big people always make excuses, not even excuses, because in their mind, that's really how they really feel. Me too, right? Mm -hmm. So you really feel like, oh no, I don't really eat a lot, or I really need to go to counseling first. But mm -hmm. if you're going to end up dead anyway, what's the point in waiting to go to counseling? Damn. That's harsh. I'm just saying, like, no, I'm being serious. Like, when you're so much overweight, even me overweight now, like, at any time I could drop dead because your heart is trying to carry your whole big body. And especially, you know, like, obese, obese, when I was 350 pounds or 400 pounds or however much pounds people are, you have to get that weight off. It's not like you're trying to lose weight to go out here and go clubbing or go get a man or go be a dancer, no disrespect. You know, it's, you're trying to be healthy mm -hmm. and at the end of the day your some of your mental issues are gonna be resolved the more you lose weight as well on top of it so, so? yeah like for example she, Wait, she we can't tell her business just say a oh, friend of yours a friend of mine for example she didn't want to get the surgery mm -hmm. her like kept asking me oh please talk to her about getting the surgery talk to her about getting the surgery every time I spoke to her she said no I don't really eat that much and I exercise I can do it on my own I'm like girl a year later you're gonna still be this size you need help everybody needs help like I don't see the issue in having help it's mm -hmm. just help like at the end of the day now if I'm 120 pounds and I'm healthy and I'm going to have surgery repetitively then that's you know, addiction. But when you actually need it, especially the gastric sleeve, mm -hmm. you just need it. It's, it's important to me. Did you ever have any health issues when you were that size? Actually, I didn't. Okay. Um, I really didn't. But I could have at any given moment. But I also was very healthy. Like, if you see my workout videos, I could work out better than probably Candy at her size could. You know, like I'm very, I've always been athletic. I played tennis in college. I've always been athletic and I love to drink water. Like the only thing I drink is water. So I'm probably flushing out the cholesterol, flushing out all the fatty stuff that I'm eating because that's all I was drinking was water. I never had high blood pressure. Actually, I'm lying. When I was pregnant with Ethan and Ava, I had, con um, what do they call it? Diabetes? Yeah. Congestive diabetes. Yeah, something. Like yeah, something mm -hmm. um, pregnancy diabetes and pregnancy high blood pressure, yeah. Oh, you didn't? Mm -hmm. But after you had your kids, yeah. that resolved. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about your first procedure. Okay. Okay, your first procedure, one more time, what was it called? Paniculectomy. Paniculectomy. That one scared me for you. Yeah. You told me not to do it. Yeah, I didn't really want you to do the surgery at first. I was kind of scared. As your friend, I kind of felt like, oh my God, they just going to mm -hmm. cut it off. Like, how does that work? You know, it was so many questions. But obviously, I did not have the information. But then, and just like we're going to talk about the good, we got to talk about the bad. You had a bad experience. I did. So after the surgery, well, first of all, let's just talk about how painful is it and how long does it take to recover for some for that surgery? I feel like I have a very high pain tolerance, so mm -hmm. I recover a lot faster than others. But they say six weeks, but really you can go, you can get back to work within a week or two. Did you have to prep your body before the surgery or anybody? 
No, anybody can get a paniculectomy. And what a lot of people don't know is a paniculectomy is covered by your insurance. Like, you don't even have to pay for a paniculectomy. Um, really? Be yeah, because it's a health issue. Because when, when that's rubbing over your privates, it could cause it to get infected. Oh, which mine know. never did, but you, if you have a good doctor, he'll write you a note. Can I say that? That's kind of messed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you have a regular doctor, some people don't have regular doctors, but when you have a regular doctor and you let him know, hey, you know, I don't like this. Like, even with your breasts, there's a lot of things you can get done on insurance. With that being said, you, you did the um, surgery. They cut off a lot of it. So, okay, let's, I guess, talk about the funny of it. How did it feel to not being able to see your JJ so all of a sudden you could see it? It was great. I was like, <laughs> oh, hey, girl. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good for real. I mean, I, 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 I'm a. Even though I had a bad experience with it, I still was appreciative for the sur for the surgery because okay. even having it before my gastric sleeve, I didn't have like a lot of people who have gastric sleeve and they leave it hanging over beforehand. Mm -hmm. They have like a lot of skin hanging over, so I never had that when I had my gastric sleeve. So it was like my stomach went down with the sleeve. Got it. Okay, but yeah. let's talk a little bit about the bad experience. Okay. So, I want you to explain it, because I just remember, it was so long ago, but I just remember at one point you were scared you had cancer. Why? What happened? I had the procedure, and, okay, so when you have a paniculectomy, when you have any major um, procedure, they give you um, JVEC drains, JP drain, sorry, and which is like a drain that comes and it suctions out all the fluid out of your stomach so that, again, you don't get infections or you don't have, like, massive swelling in your stomach, especially the bigger you are and, and the more intense of the surgery you have, mm -hmm. more than likely you're going to have these drains hanging out of you. Mm -hmm. The drains are only supposed to last 10 to 14 weeks, uh, 14 days. Mm -hmm. I had mine in for like six weeks. Why? Because I just kept draining. Like what you can't, you're supposed to take them off when you stop draining, don't quote me, but maybe like 50 and under for three days in a row. Okay, so. I was always over 50. Why was you draining like that? I don't know. So my mom, who was a nurse, she said, you need to go get um, a CAT scan. So I'm like, okay. So I called the doctor who did it. She issued me a CAT scan. And then that night, her and one of my friends at the time came knocking at my door that night crying. The doctor? Yeah. Okay. Saying that um, I have lymphoma. Wow. Yeah. Okay, and why did they think that? Because my lymph nodes on the inside were like really extremely swollen. Gotcha. So I had to go to an oncologist for maybe like three to six months. I had to have two biopsies, but my biopsies were upper mesentery. This is your mesentery, upper mesentery and lower mesentery. Mm. But where did I get cut? Right here. In the middle. Right. So the oncologist said that she nicked me, which caught... So after two biopsies and they came out negative, the oncologist said that she nicked me and it caused my lymph nodes to act crazy, which had them swollen so much to make it appear to be lymphoma. So what was nicked? Um, my, in my stomach. Yours? Yeah, the insides. You have lymph nodes all over your body. Okay, but was it a specific organ or you just don't no, know No, I don't know. Nicked? Yeah, I don't know what Okay, was you nicked. don't know what yeah. it was. Something was nicked. Yeah. And it was causing like an infection or something that was yeah. causing the lymph nodes mm -hmm. to be swollen. So, okay. So basically, I guess what we would take from that situation is if your drains are over 50, <laughs> over 14 days, you might want to go see a different doctor yeah. to get a second opinion. When I tell you, okay, so first of all, Jody has two kids. And she was like, oh, stressed out. I was stressed out. You was. We, what? Oh, I was mad. I was angry. I wanted to call the doctor. Oh, no, really I was, was ready to just go ham and cheese on this particular doctor that she had. Um, you didn't yeah, even, you know what's so crazy? That's really like when I fell in love with you. Because it's like you, remember they asked you to film with that doctor. And uh -huh. you said, no, I'm not filming with that doctor. Oh, I And refused. I said, oh, she's loyal. 
<laughs> she did because she didn't really. That was like years ago, and I've been doing. How long you been married? Seven now. So I've been doing your hair for seven years, right? Mm -hmm. That was probably like five years. So I've only known her maybe like two years. Like that's not to me. That's not long. And we was just clients. It's not like you know. That's not long enough to me to for you to be turning down money because you feel like you don't agree with the doctor. Like. Yeah. That's loyalty to me. Yeah, I totally forgot. You're right. That did happen. Um, yeah, somebody was trying to get me to film with this particular uh, doctor, and I just couldn't do it. I was like, I refuse. I don't care. I'm yeah. not doing that. I'm not um, promoting that because at the time, it was just what had happened with Jody. We, I think we were still trying to figure some things out or something, yeah. and I was just so like, done yeah. <laughs> and upset about the whole situation. I just was not going to be a part of um, any type of promotions for that. At the end of the day, once they figured out the problem, yeah, it was whoop, okay. you were fine then. Yeah. Yeah. So it, praise to God. Praise the Lord. Yeah. It wasn't cancer. Mm -hmm. um, they just scared the crap out of my friend <laughs> because of basically them really not knowing what they was doing. I think it was a little too early in the game for her to be doing that type of surgery. I think that's what happened because she was kind of new yeah. to that. Praise the Lord. Thank mm -hmm. you, Jesus. You was fine and it was fixed. Yeah. But guys, if you're doing, if you're getting surgeries done, different things, please, if you see anything that doesn't feel right, doesn't look right, don't take so long to go yeah. and, and get a, a, you know, a different opinion from a different doctor. Or just, just get it checked out. Yeah, get it checked out. So after that, how much longer was it before you decided to get the sleeve? Because did you have to lose weight to even get the sleeve? I did, yeah, because I did it through my insurance. Right. So if you pay to get the sleeve, you don't have to. But if you go through your insurance, your insurance makes you lose a certain amount of weight. You have to go to counseling. You have to um, have nutritional classes um, and then just tests. You have to have a stress test. Like there's a lot of things that you have to do to be checked off for the insurance in order to get it done first. Oh, okay, got it, got mm -hmm. it. So when you decided what made you to go, you wasn't scared from what happened to the previous surgery to go ahead and do the next one? No. Why? I don't, I'm just like, I'm a big believer in God and I just feel like when it's my time, it's gonna be my time anyway. And I just, I was just, I just knew I wasn't gonna lose the weight, like just, it's, it's not a weight thing. Like I'm telling you, it's a, it's a, it's everything. It's like a mental thing, a physical thing. It's, it's everything. Like, and you can work out as, and some people do do it now. My sister literally lost 60 pounds and she's skinny as a rake now and she was big, but I just knew it, I wasn't going to do it. Mm -hmm. I just know. And I just need the help. So, all right. When you went and you decided to do the sleep, okay. Did you, do you like what that particular doctor did. Yeah, I do. Okay, would you recommend that doctor? I would. Okay, go ahead and say who that doctor is. Um, Titus Duncan, um, Peachtree Bariatrics. He has one on in Northside and he has one on in Jonesboro. Okay, so that procedure went smoothly. Yeah. You didn't have any issues. No issues. And you ended up losing once again a hundred and sixty, like hundred and sixty pounds yeah. somewhere in there. Um, how long did it take for you to lose once he? put the sleeve on you. So it is not, so what a sleeve is, is where they cut your stomach. So your stomach, big people's stomach is probably like the size of a football mm -hmm. and they cut it down to the size of half a banana. Mm -hmm. So once they cut, and they take away that stomach out of, out of your belly. Okay, so yeah, cause it's so, I began confused between the difference in the lap band and the sleeve. So the lap band is where they put like a little ring over your stomach and mm -hmm. then it, you can, so now they have it where you can loosen the band if you want to, to be you able can? to eat some more. Yeah, it's like literally you press the button and you can loosen the band to be able to eat more. Oh, that ain't right. And then you can what's tighten the it back later. It? I mean, that would, I don't know that what's the point the of that. Yeah, it really does. The gastric sleeve is where they take away your stomach and mm -hmm. Then, like literally physically take away your most of your stomach and they just leave you with a little pouch because mm -hmm. really your stomach is only supposed to be like this and you're only supposed to eat what's in your can fit in your hand mm -hmm. so um and then they have the gastric bypass where they bypass the stomach go through your intestines and go straight out that one is, to me is i wouldn't do that because i feel like i need another sleeve <laughs> <laughs> 
Back. How many sleeves can you get? You, okay, so it used to be at the time when I got it done, you could only have one sleeve, but now they do a revision sleeve. But I'm scared. Now, yeah, now that I'm scared of no revision sleeve. <laughs> I want to just do it again, like taking a test. I want to redo it. Girl. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not going to do it, though. But I, I do think about it sometimes. Girl. <laughs> so with the, the let's, what's the recovery time of them doing the sleeve? Nothing. Three, three days. Really? Yeah. Even but though they have your stomach. They go in and they do everything. Um, it's non-invasive. Oh, really? Yeah, laparoscopically, yep. Yeah. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Not non-invasive, like at all. Like I literally walked afterwards, but my cousin who just did it, cause I'm literally an advocate for that, mm -hmm. for everybody. And my cousin just did it and she was at my house for maybe two days. Cause you know, some, they give you pain medicine. So mm -hmm. some people it takes longer. So you're mm -hmm. sleeping a lot. Okay. So you didn't have any side effects from that surgery? No, none. Okay. One more time. Say his name. Dr. Titus Duncan at Atlanta Pe Peachtree Bariatrics. Okay, so yeah. hey, if y'all looking for somebody to do a consultation with. He's really good. And like, he's been on TV. Like, he's really, really good. Yeah, and listen, all these people that we recommended to y'all, we are not getting paid for this. So this is like real recommendation, like real experience. This is what we had to deal with or good things we've heard about these people. If we ain't hear, hear nothing good about them, we're not going to say their name. So then after the sleeve, after you lost the weight, did you have a lot of extra skin? I did, I still do. So after I had the sleeve, I, a year later, I went to Tania Medina. Now I love- Where's Tania Medina? She's in Dominican Republic. Okay, I got it. I love Dr. Medina. She, she's like a beauty pageant girl and I'm a really girly girl. She was really sweet, but I took my mom with me mm -hmm. and um, I don't know her and my my mom is first of all my mom is Jamaican, mm -hmm. so you know how Jamaicans are really feisty. But oh, that's, sidebar. <sighs> Jody is from England. Yeah, <laughs> so I took my mom with me. So she's a nurse, been a nurse for a long time, RN nurse, charging us everything for a long time. So she knows everything about the med medical field. And so her and Medina got into it some kind of way, what? like not not like a fight, but just like arguing, like back really? and forth. The doctor. Yeah. Yes. Why? But because my mom was like asking a whole bunch of questions and the lady wasn't used to that because most of the time when people go to DR, they want the surgery so bad, they're not asking no questions. They don't care, which is why stuff goes wrong. Mm -hmm. But I took my mom with me, who's a nurse. My mom said, I'm not letting you go over there by yourself. If anything happens, what am I going to look like? I'm a nurse letting my daughter go over there, right? Mm -hmm. So she was asking her a whole bunch of questions and... um they just got into it. So I feel Sidebar. like... Sidebar. So Medina speaks English? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I, I mean, I was just trying to make sure because I know some of the medical centers in overseas, I mean, not overseas, but in Most of the other doctors countries, speak English though. They do. Most of the doctors speak English, but the nurses don't. Got it. So when you go over there, you always want to have an overnight nurse. Got it. So they got into it. And so the day of my surgery, my mom couldn't even go. She actually wasn't even going to do my surgery. And I hope my mom don't get mad at me for saying this. She wasn't even going to do my surgery. Did it what? you though, like that this lady argued with my mom and she's about to open me up? No, because I know how my mom is. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> and my mom is, like, the best mom in the world. Like, she really is. Like, she's very protective. So it's not like, you know, she's a bad mom or anything. Like, she was asking questions because I'm her daughter. And she's a nurse and she knows better. So it wasn't, like, a bad thing on neither one of their behalf. Mm -hmm. Because my mom's a nurse, so she's protecting her daughter. And then she's a doctor who does this six seven times a day and mm -hmm. she knows what she's doing too so you you chose me so you want to get get your body done or not right that's how they are over there like the doctors are almost like celebrities over there okay so they don't want to be asked a whole bunch of questions you know mm -hmm. and they feel like you should have done your research but okay so she went ahead and did your surgery she, was, anyway. she said okay i'm just not gonna do your surgery <gasps> and so i'm sitting over here crying and crying and crying and then my mom was like well just let her do her surgery and she said well you can do the surgery but you can't she can't come with you so i had to go to the surgery by myself she did it but i still feel like she didn't pull me tighter enough because usually like, when you have a tummy tuck like you shouldn't be able to have be able to pinch no fat mm -hmm. which i don't it's not a lot of fat like she did a good job i'm not gonna say she didn't do a good job I just feel like she could have tucked me just a little bit tighter. 
Because I was like standing probably like within a week. You're supposed to be bent over for like two weeks, but I was like, all the other girls are walking around the house well, like this. First of all, we up. already know that you have a high tolerance for pain. Yeah. And secondly, here's the other question. What all did she do in that surgery? Like what all did you get done? She, she did a tummy tuck and, oh, and BBL and a lipo. Oh, you got tummy tuck, BBL, lipo. Mm -hmm. So how long were you under? Mm, maybe two hours. Okay, not that long. Yeah. Oh, okay, because they say that they can keep you under longer when you're in another country. Well, than over in the there, States. they don't put you under under like that anyway. You was awake when they yeah. were doing the tummy tuck? Yeah. Okay, oh my so God, listen, they, they didn't at, hurt. I don't know who gets put to sleep over there, but barely anybody gets put to sleep. They give you a blue pill to kind of relax you and calm you down, and then they give you a epidural. Ooh, that was it? Yeah. And you got lipo and a tummy tuck. And a BBL. And a BBL mm -hmm. under just that? Yeah. You don't feel it. <gasps> now, for her, I went to sleep. Maybe because I was crying the day before I was just tired. I don't know. But I was asleep the whole time with her. I, and supposedly, I was asleep the whole day. And then, um, but then I, my neck surgery, I was awake. Like, I felt them flip me over and everything. Are you serious? Yeah. So did you okay. decide to go over there because of the money, because you could do more procedures at one time, or because you found the doctor you liked? I, honestly, a little bit of everything. Number one, it's definitely mo more cost effective. Number two, the doctors do way better work over there. Like literally way better. If, you, if I would have got a tummy tuck over here, I would be boxy. Over there, they're going to give you shape. And now, I'm, you know, my dad's mm -hmm. white, so I needed a little shape. <laughs> So that's, that's another reason why I went over there. But really, there's such a bad stigma over there. But that clinic was nicer than this room. Like, I mean, this it's, is not the prototype, but OK. No, I'm saying this room <laughs> is gorgeous. But I'm saying, like, people don't think that. People think that going over into a chop shop is not a chop shop. They got the same glitter. They got the. They have see-through floors. Like, her it's office was, oh, luxury. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know any doctor's offices over here that look like that. You could eat off their floors. Ooh. Yeah. Do you recommend her? I do. Mm-hmm. Okay, so she recommends, what's her name? Tania Medina. Tania Medina. She's very safe. If you want to go over there and know you're going to come back, she's very safe. That's there's important. Other, there's other doctors that will go all in, all, all in, and like make me come out looking like you at the end. But I wanted to come home to my kids. <laughs> You know, I just wanted to be safe. Like, I, gotcha. every procedure I do, I want to be safe. So it's not like I want to do it at all costs. My next procedure, I wanted him to do my arms, and he said that he doesn't feel comfortable, so I said, okay. Okay, so this is a different doctor. Yeah. Okay, so wait, let's move. Let's not jump to the next doctor too soon. Um. So basically, when you go overseas, you find a doctor. You want to do research, LinkedIn, go on to Real Self, everything, and do your research on your doctor mm -hmm. the same way you would do here. Then you... WhatsApp them, get in touch with them. Sometimes you can't get in touch with them, so you have to get a surgery um, coordinator. Mm. You WhatsApp them, you send them naked pictures of yourself, you go back and forth, they give you a list of everything you need to bring. And if you agree to go to them, then you pay a $500 deposit and then you pay the rest later. You said it wasn't painful for you, but you also got a BBL. Mm -hmm. So with the BBL, you know, from what I hear or whatever, you are not supposed to be sitting on your ass. Mm. Did that happen in your situation? Well, when you do the front and the back, they sacrifice the back for the front. So yeah, you lay on your back, but Got you're it. you're laying on a boppy. A boppy at all times. A boppy yeah. pillow. You were happy with how the way that your booty came out and all I, that. I think God just doesn't want me to have a booty. What do you mean? Because every time, yeah, every me. time I have a BBL, it's like it's, every time. How many I mean, BBLs I've had I've had? had one twice, and okay, it, and it just disappears. It's there. No, it's not. It's like, definitely look right there. Here. You got the top of your back, too. Yeah, well, that was like. But public. first of all, it's there. Like, how much booty do you need? You want one of those big old booties that no, look like they No, I dragging? actually don't. I just want it to be round. To and me, it's not I, round, it's flat. I think it's. Do some squats. Girl, get the squat, but I think it looks good <laughs> with your shape. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not going to do it again, though. Because I feel like if they put say. any more, then you're going to start looking. Yeah. It would be too much. Yeah, I don't want to look like I have a diaper booty. Yeah, don't do that. Once you have lipo somewhere, it just seems like you start gaining fat in places that you never gained fat before. So where do you think it went when they removed it from, I guess, like your waist area? When stuff? I started getting my arms. 
Oh, your arms started and getting bigger. And my breasts, yeah. And your boobs got bigger. Yeah, but the thing with me is, so, really and truly. Ooh, you coming up your back. Oh, sorry. Really and truly, I just don't, I need to just have better discipline because with me having a gastric sleeve and having the surgery, do you not notice, like, when you have surgery, you can gain the weight and then lose it really fast? Mm hmm Like, that's how I am, too. But I just love to eat just so much. Girl, you can only get so many surgeries, child. <laughs> Please stop. She did BBL, lipo, and a tummy tuck. Oh, and a tummy tuck. And you was happy with the tummy tuck? Yeah. Okay, cool. I love my belly button. She did a good belly button. So moving right along, what was the next procedure that you did? My br a breast lift, lipo, and then a, and another BBL. Okay. So <laughs> before we start talking about this doctor, uh huh. Were you happy with what they did? Okay, so I was happy with it day one, two, and three. But after that, though. No. Why? Because I think he did a better job at rounding out my butt, yeah. But my breasts, okay, so again, being bigger, I have skin right here. So, like, that comes over, right? And a lot of people don't have it, because I actually Google breast doctors all the time and I never see anyone with my breasts. I saw one person with my breasts the other day mm -hmm. and um, she got it cut up here. And I told him to do that, but he didn't. He just gave me a lift. I mean, it obviously it looks better than what I had before, mm -hmm. but it still wasn't like, I'm gonna have to still do it again. This is your back bar lift and this is your arm lift. That's why I said, when I go back, I wanna get all three of them done at the same time. Got it. So w when you go on vacation for a long time, just let me know. <laughs> Get it you want me to be there and sit there with it, get it done. So no, your mama I don't get your kids out I just again. want to make sure I don't have to, uh, you don't need your head done while I'm out for six weeks. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Were you happy with what he did? Yeah, he did. There was no malpractice going on. His facility again was nice. Not as nice as Medina's, but it was nice. He was a nice man. I would recommend him. I wouldn't go back to him. Okay, well no, we're not saying his name then. But with that time when he did the BBL, you was a little bit happier. Yeah, with him. he definitely rounded it up a little bit more. And how did you feel about your breast lift? I other than I don't the like it. You don't like your breast lift? No, not really. Oh, the actual, yeah, my nipples still look good. I still have my nipples, I still have, I'm telling you, he's not a bad doctor. Mm -hmm. But just for me, personally, because I have so much skin, because I lost so much weight, I wouldn't go back to him, but he's still a good doctor. Did you do anything after that? Was it the last yeah. thing you've done? Yeah. Okay, so she has done a lot of different procedures. Where are you now with your weight loss, do you feel that the sleeve is still working or do you feel like yeah. you're eating through the sleeve? No. Meaning, because some people say oh. their stomach still stretches out. No, my I still get full like after a little bit. Now, can I still keep eating? Yeah, I can. Now, I can't eat a lot though, past it, but I can, and it's certain things too, like meat you can't eat a lot of, pasta you can't eat a lot of, but like pasta. chips, um, rice even, you can stuff that down. Meat and stuff, no, you can't, you still can't. But I did my sleeve different too, though. What do you mean? Because they tell you for like a couple of days to drink smoothies and then you can add more and more. I never added more and more. I stayed on smoothies for a long time. So my I wanted my stomach to fully heal tight. So that's why I still get full. But I, again, still eat past it. Now, the only thing I do get a lot is acid reflux and you like burp a lot. Yeah. Is that because you're eating past it? I don't know. <laughs> Probably. It might be, I don't know. Here's my next question is about you and your decision to do a recovery house in Dominican Republic. I decided to do a recovery house because I'm really interested in the whole surgery side of things. Like I really liked it. So my first recovery house was really Spanish looking. Hot, it, we were so hot in there, it's not even funny. That's the one I went with to my mom. But the staff was so nice. But the second recovery ha house I stayed in, my view overlooked the ocean. Like it was just really nice. Mm -hmm. And But the staff wasn't as nice. The manager wasn't as, as, as accommodating. 
and I just felt like I could really do a good job. Um, like, cause I really genuinely care about people and they're like, you gotta be really positive when you go in there. Mm -hmm. People go in there and they're miserable and they're sad, but this is an elective surgery. Mm -hmm. Like you chose to have it done. So mm -hmm. don't like, you know, be happy and be, you know, be optimistic and be, mm -hmm. you know, glad that you're getting this done and you're able to get it done. So I just felt like I wanted to combine both of those houses and put it into one. Like mm -hmm. good staff, but it's still the nice American ambiance. How are you gonna accomplish that? when you don't live there so how was that plan well my son lives there so i go over there like every other week um mm -hmm. for a couple of days so i'm gonna be over there all the time and so i just figured i may as well you know start a business while i'm over there too hey you know i love starting everybody <laughs> who want to boss up and start businesses yeah and i wanted to do it for my last surgery but it's really hard because i don't speak fluent spanish i understand spanish but i can't speak it back fluently so just calling people and asking them for help but now um, my driver over there he's been really helping me and helping me try to find houses and find staff so I'm actually doing it with peaches um, so we've gone over there we've hired staff we found two we actually have two houses and already yeah so one house um, accommodates ten girls it's gorgeous it's so zen so peaceful like it's almost like I would stay in that house. Mm -hmm. The other house is very modern and it's going to be more like one is like St. Regis and the other one's like the W. Got it. So, um, but the St. Regis one, which is really the Zona Colonial one, it's almost has like a New Orleans feel. Like when you go outside, it's very historic. Mm -hmm. um, you can go and walk to pubs and restaurants and shop and mm -hmm. like it's really close. Like I would really like that one. And then the other one, it has beautiful views. Like you sit, it has balconies in most of the bedrooms. You sit outside on the balcony. Like mm -hmm. it's really nice. And it's like, I would take that house and live in it in America. It's called Bella Christina recovery mm -hmm. house the only thing we have to add is like so like furniture but we wanted to have um adjustable beds for everybody mm -hmm. so instead of like hospital beds where you feel dreary and you feel like you're in a hospital just laying there all day we just have the adjustable beds that recline and mm -hmm. lift your feet up or vibrate even you know can't wait for you to come over and see it yeah i'm excited for you maybe we can get you some more surgery what Child, we do? i just had my <laughs> breast lifted and reduced and i am done and went to surgery you're not getting nothing else no i don't feel like i need nothing no you else. don't you don't but the way you looked at me is like you trying no, to say I, was I trying, need something no, else. Oh no! no what I was, are you trying to say? I was trying to figure out what you can get done so you can come stay in the recovery Listen, house. Listen, I don't need to stay in the recovery <laughs> house. I can just come by and visit you and just say, "Hey, oh you my, did a great uh, job." What can we I get don't there? need we to get, get my your, your fingers life on or something. Girl, <laughs> just come stay in the recovery house. I told y'all she's an advocate for <laughs> surgery. She want to get everybody surgery, man. Everybody, Jeez, I just got these. <laughs> And all of, our, all of our staff in the recovery house is bilingual. That's another thing, too, mm -hmm. like that's really important because when you're in pain, you want to make sure that you can speak to people and know what, instead of speaking into the phone and Siri don't understand what you're saying because you're in so much pain, like all of our staff, like from the manager to the nurses, everybody is bilingual. Well, I'm excited for you. I'm excited. I'm excited for your new, your new project, new business. Yeah. And I am praying for much success and a whole lot Thank of money. Thank you. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, guys, I love when we have guests that are just so open to give you all the good information. She gave you all the tea and pictures. So listen, if you need any more information, please hit up Jody. We're going to put your Instagram, um, yeah. so at so Jody. But how else can they find it? Now, listen, she also sells hair. She has the best clip-ins ever of anybody in life and extensions and extensions you know just yeah. weave periods but i like clip-ins so that's why i said yeah <laughs> but um you also what else do you have just so that they know all things beauty yeah. jody is the expert on seal virgin hair um is my hair page so jody is my instagram page and then at bella christina recovery house anything else you got coming up that you want to tell the people about mm -hmm. No, not right. Oh, well, you know, we're doing the other hairline, but mm -hmm. that's not out yet. Okay, well, we can bring you back to talk about yeah. that when that's done. All right, well, thank you for coming in and talking to us. And everybody, please like, comment, subscribe, yes. um, share with everyone because there's so much good information on here. And thank you for watching. Speak on it. Speak on it.
Tarits. <laughs>